Hi, this is the great Johannes speaking. I was going to write an article titled Lament for the West. And I said that I'm not going to cry about the death of Western civilization. I just want to figure out the process that led to it. And as I started writing about several topics that were on my mind, I came across the topic of cholesterol. And then I realized that cholesterol is the key to understanding the death of Western civilization and the dying reproductive capacity of white people. Because it turns out that cholesterol in boys turns into testosterone, the male hormone that makes boys manlier as they grow up into adulthood. And the same cholesterol in girls turns into estrogen, which is the hormone that makes girls into more womanly women, more feminine women. So you can imagine what happens if you're on a low cholesterol diet. Then this sexual dimorphism, dimorphism means the difference between the sexes. So sexual dimorphism is reduced. It means girls on a low cholesterol diet have less estrogen and become less womanly and boys get less testosterone and become less manly. Okay, it means they become more gender neutral. They revert to a more gender neutral mean. Not quite perfectly, but significantly. And can you guess now what sort of diets are high in cholesterol and what sort of diets are low in cholesterol? Well, red meat and dairy products, full fat dairy, milk, uh, butter, yogurts, and so on. And of course, red meat, including pork, right, is high in cholesterol which means that boys and girls on such a diet will both become uh, their sexual potential. They become their, the, the boys become their manliest potential and the girls their feminine potential. On a low cholesterol diet, however, which is a vegan diet, this doesn't happen and people remain somewhat stunted. I call it poverty syndrome. Poor people, because you know, dairy foods and meats, red meats are more expensive. We know that it has always been more expensive. So poorer people cannot afford these foods. Their sexual dimorphism, therefore, is less pronounced. Not quite effaced, but less pronounced. Now you probably figure out why governments in the West are telling us that red meats are bad for us. Because by eating red meat and dairy foods, we become more pronounced. Our sexuality becomes more pronounced. The men become manlier, the boys become, uh, the boys become manlier men, and the girls become more feminine. Why on earth would governments not want men to be men and women to be women? What the, hell, what the hell is behind this? Well, that's the movement to make humanity more gender neutral. But then why did it start in the West? Well, it turns out, believe it or not, the pastoralist people, that means the people of Northwestern Europe, the ones who evolved to digest lactose, they are lactose tolerant, for example, that means they can digest milk. And because they can digest milk, they can get the better protein, the animal fats, and animal proteins from this milk, which are so easily digested in that liquid form, right? But milk also contains a lot of cholesterol, fatty, full fat milk, as do yogurts and butters and other dairy foods, and of course, eggs and meat. It turns out that even though white women of Northwest European descent are the tallest women in the world, because their men, the white men of Northwestern Europe, are so much taller, the difference in height between men and women of Northwest European descent is the largest difference. It means the sexual dimorphism is most pronounced among the white people of Northwestern Europe, among, say, Scandinavians, Northern Germans, Dutch people, Belgian people, to some extent, uh, Northeast French people, and so on, also the East English people who are of Aryan stock. They have the largest sexual dimorphism, meaning just the largest differences in male and female's bodies. These differences are less pronounced in other races of people, and they are the least pronounced in the East Asian people, say East Asian Chinese, Han Chinese people. Why is that? Because the Han Chinese in East Asia, they have a long history, more than 10,000 years of rice and grain diets. Rice and grain, that's basically vegan food, if you don't supplement it with eggs or poultry too much, which they don't because it's expensive there, they have to eat, uh, they live off rice and grains. Therefore, they have the lowest cholesterol diets. Yes, East Asian people naturally have had the lowest cholesterol diets. And so they have had the least testosterone in males and the least 
estrogen in females, and so their physical body differences are least pronounced. Indeed, the difference in height between an East Asian man and East Asian women are the smallest of all races of the world. But then, why on earth did we in the Western world, around the 1960s this happened, we started to believe that cholesterol was bad for you. And if cholesterol wasn't outright bad for you, there was still bad cholesterol. And you had to avoid bad cholesterol by eating less eggs, drinking less milk, and eating less butter. In fact, one major American supermarket chain eventually began pushing for margarines, which is a sort of, sort of butter, it's not butter, but it is a sort of fatty substance derived from seed oils, margarine, rapeseed oil, for example, in order to replace the butter sales so that people would stop eating the butter because butter from cow milk contains a lot of cholesterol, which makes men manly and makes women womanly. By getting butter out of, the, out of the diet, so to speak, and replacing it with margarine, that was the first step to start weakening the white people of Northwest European descent. Mind you that half of white people in the USA today even are of German descent and a lot more of Scandinavian and Dutch and, and East Anglian. Those are very, the very white people whose ancestors evolved on a diet of high cholesterol, of red meat and dairy foods, because our ancestors, the Yamnaya, they were the pastoralists of the Pontic steppes, which is now southern Russia and Ukraine, where we have the conflict. But that's where our ancestors used to have their cattle. We used to live of milk, meat and dairy and butter and so on. We had a high cholesterol diet. So why on earth do we then tell these people in the USA first and then also in Europe and now elsewhere to stop eating the cholesterol? It is, is, isn't it a bit obvious that this is a di direct targeted attack on the sexual dimorphism and therefore on the reproductive successes of a certain ethnic group of people, namely the Northwest European white people. And why did we begin to believe cholesterol was bad? Well, because of TV, because of advertising, because of government and because of education. All of these people all of a sudden start to tell us that we shouldn't eat cholesterol. They didn't tell us that cholesterol is what is a building block for testosterone and for estrogen in girls and women. They didn't tell us that. They just told us it's bad for your heart. You're going to get your arteries will get clogged up and you're going to, I don't know, drop dead like a fly. Right. And so comes the vegan movement along and the vegan movement says don't eat animal products and don't eat dairy. Vegetarians can eat dairy. I believe I believe vegetarians may eat uh, cheese and may drink milk and eggs, I believe. But the vegans do away with all of these animal foods. That means vegans literally ban the high cholesterol foods as a category. All high cholesterol foods are not part of the vegan diet. Vegans have a low cholesterol diet. You can Google it yourself. Cholesterol and vegan diets. You will find results on Google itself saying that vegan diets give you a low cholesterol, which means that boys and girls raised on a vegan diet will not have as pronounced of a sexual dimorphism as other people who do eat red meat and dairy. Boys raised on a vegan diet, on a strict vegan diet, first of all, they will not have a lot of energy. They may even have developmental problems because it's absolutely unhealthy for babies to grow on a vegan diet. Even vegan babies need mother's milk. Right? Without even mother's milk, babies can't even survive. In fact, there's been a case in Belgium where a baby was denied the mother's milk and otherwise fed on a strictly vegan diet. Guess what happened? The baby died. Babies cannot do without the animal fats and protein and the cholesterol that they get from their mother's milk. So, and after the mother's milk, they are supposed to continue eating high cholesterol, meaning rich foods. Stop calling them high cholesterol foods. Start calling them rich foods. Red meat, dairy, butter, milk, yogurt, cheese, and eggs. Those are rich foods. They are extremely healthy. They make people strong. They make men's bones strong and men's muscles big. And they make women fat like a cow so they can have 10 children each. That's why on a low cholesterol diet, you may have noticed that a lot of vegan women, are they look anorexic. Or have you seen these vegan bodybuilders, the ones who adhere to a strict vegan diet. They've got like 3% body fat. And you think that's good? No, it's not. Anything below 10% body fat is basically unhealthy, even for men. Yeah? But on a 3% fat body, the guy 
has muscle but no fat and he looks like a terminally ill patient who is about to die he's like he looks like a corpse on steroids one more reason why we are told to eat a low cholesterol diet and mind you the author of that original work that said that cholesterol was bad that man was called uh, professor keys or professor key ansel key or is it ansel keys let me look it up professor ansel keys who wrote that original book even he later admitted that his book was false because he based the book on uh, nitpicking on cherry picking the results from certain countries and only using those few results that gave him the conclusion he wanted in other words he admitted that he was defrauding people that research is total bullshit we know it is because the author who did the research admitted it and other researchers confirmed that it was in fact bullshit cholesterol is not bad for you there is no bad cholesterol either because no cholesterol is bad you can eat cholesterol in large quantities and be fine because it doesn't do anything bad to your body, not even in large quantities. But cholesterol in men gives you testosterone and cholesterol in women makes them more feminine because they get more estrogens. So I was going to say, I was going to say there's one more reason why they keep telling us to have a low cholesterol diet anyway, despite the evidence coming out that cholesterol isn't bad for you. And that it's an, it's a, an essential building block for your testosterone. Why wouldn't we eat this? Another reason is I told you about the East Asian people who, who evolved on a diet of rice and grains and so on, right? They have a low cholesterol diet. Their sexual dimorphism is not so pronounced. The same is true for the Central African people, the Negro people. What is their traditional diet in Central Africa? I mean, what happened? What were they eating before the white man came along? They were eating starchy roots that they dug out of the soil. Sugary fruits, Africa has lots of fruit trees, right? Watermelon and some poultry. They did eat some poultry. Okay, but their diet did consist mostly of starchy roots and sugary fruits. Again, the traditional Negro diet, fruits and roots and some poultry, is low in cholesterol. They do have a different sexual dimorphism. And like I said, the dimorphism of the meat drinking uh, meat eating and milk drinking white people of northwestern europe is most pronounced there the men and women are the men are manliest and the women are most feminine on average right? we're talking about averages here right there's always differences we know that and so you see that cholesterol is the key to destroy white western civilization white culture white nations white society and white people because by reducing or removing or even banning cholesterol by banning the, the consumption of red meat by banning milk by banning farming in the netherlands you know, the dutch farmers are most successful at farming uh cows so they the dutch government if you know if you, i don't know if you know this but the dutch government is banning this kind of farms they want the cattle farmers to leave the netherlands they the government's actually the state is buying off these farms in order to turn them into migrant housing right but by banning this dutch dairy industry and the meat industry in the netherlands which is which is the largest in europe the largest in the world i'd say at least per uh, per territory by doing so also other peoples living in europe who are accustomed to buying this meat, Dutch meat and Dutch dairy and Dutch milk and Dutch cheese, will no longer have access to these foods. And so the overall cholesterol consumption of the white Europeans is going to go down in the next few decades because the production of it is being banned. Now, some of it may be moved further to Eastern Europe, so we may hopefully in Poland see a lot of dairy production there so we can continue to eat red meat and milk and cheese from Polish farmers, hopefully, right? Which would be a good thing that we can keep a high cholesterol diet. But of course, how are we going to combat the incessant media propaganda that keeps telling us we need to eat vegan or vegetarian and eat low cholesterol when we should be doing the exact opposite to stay healthy? How are we going to fight these insidious sick degenerate western governments who are literally out to sabotage our people by altering the food supply by changing us chemically by denying us you know amino acids and enzymes and building blocks that we need to stay healthy such as cholesterol which is a good food we need cholesterol it is good for us right why are we being denied this 
well, to destroy us, to weaken us from within, to weaken us in a way that you can kill us off without shooting bullets at us, without bombing us, simply by having about half a century or more patience and patiently waiting for white kids, new generations of white kids to turn out stunted. Because the boys and girls, especially white boys and, white boys and girls, because they are, their ancestors evolved on a high cholesterol diet, by denying them the cholesterol that their bodies expect and need, you weaken them. No wonder now that 20% of kids in the USA now say that they identify as on being on the LGBT spectrum. Why would that be so? Because they were raised on these vegan diets with, with low cholesterol and therefore they were denied the testosterone to become men and the girls were denied the estrogen to become more womanly women. And so they are not only just changing our bodies, but they are changing the social organization that is a consequence of being strongly sexually dimorphic race, such as the white people of Northwestern Europe. By removing the, the differences in our bodies, mind you, this affects the brain as well, right? Men on a high cholesterol, boys on a high cholesterol diet get the testosterone. It's not just their bones and muscle, the difference, but their brains are heavily altered under the influence of the presence of so much testosterone in their blood. It makes them think differently and it makes the women also more feminine and makes the women think makes the women think differently. And so when you reduce that, when you make men and women think more alike, not entirely like, like I said, it doesn't efface the differences, but it makes the differences less pronounced. And by making these differences less pronounced, you make the society more gender neutral. You will have more people identifying on the LGBT spectrum, not because they are, but because they have been weakened from within, because they have been stunted, because they have been raised on a poverty diet. And what are we going to do about it? Hmm? What are we going to do about it? We're going to start funding farms for red meat, milk, dairy, cheese, and yogurt. We're going to invest in that future. We're going to give ourselves the high cholesterol foods that we deserve and need that we evolved on, and we're going to stay strong. That's what we're going to do.